What is up you guys? Welcome back. Today I'm filming a chatty get ready with me video. Ruben is going to be taking me on a date night that he doesn't know that he's taking me on yet. I'm super excited because this is the first video that I'm filming with my new hair. I freaking love it. I've now had it done like this for about a week and a half. I just got these extensions put in not that long ago so I just feel very fall and I'm excited to do my makeup today. So what we're doing tonight is we're going to go watch Hocus Pocus in the park the town that's putting it on is doing it in like this like ballpark area or whatever so it'll be really fun i'm excited so it's gonna be like a nice 65 degree night i'm just excited to go it's a nice fun festive fall thing today is actually october 1st that i'm filming this so it just feels very fall so let's go ahead and get ready okay so i want to start with face primer this is the wet and wild impossible primer i've been using this a lot recently and i've really been liking it so i'm going to apply this all over my skin okay and then for foundation i need to get another shade in that catrice foundation because i really love it but i have only my fair shade now that i've got my spray tan on i don't think that that color is going to match me so i'm going to use the makeup forever reboot foundation because this color matches me the best out of any foundation when i'm more tan it's in the shade y365 pump it on the back of my brush i've been doing this recently just because i'm sick of putting makeup on the back of my hand in my opinion i like the way it looks better when i apply it on the back of my hand because i can get the product into the brush better um it's just a little bit more i don't know i guess a professional way of applying it i'm um, doing this the makeup can oxidize in the areas that you set it first and then you can go in with a lot more foundation than maybe you would have wanted neither way is wrong it's just a preference and i definitely prefer to work the product into the brush first off of a surface yeah i've just been doing it this way instead because it's just a little bit cleaner the nose just with whatever's left over on the brush and same with the forehead. I always do a light amount on the forehead and the nose, usually with any leftover product. I feel like I don't really need a lot of coverage on my forehead. If I put too much on my nose, then it tends to break up and look weird. Okay, for concealer, I'm gonna grab the Laura Mercier concealer in 3.5N. Looks like this, and I'm gonna mix it with a lighter color just because this is gonna be a little bit too dark. So I'm gonna pop that there. And then I'm gonna dot just a little bit of a lighter one in here. Doot, doot. And I'm gonna use my FO3 brush from Sigma, which is my favorite concealer brush. Or I guess I should say brush for concealer because technically it's a highlighter brush, but you can use it for whatever you want. I need to go get some lawn chairs because I'm gonna invite Ruben's mom to come with tonight too. We don't have any lawn chairs. It's either that or we sit on a blanket, which you know, I'm fine with, but I think it'd be nice for her to have somewhere nice to sit. Just need a little bit of extra coverage. I'm excited to do my makeup today. This, I mean, I've done my makeup since I've gotten my hair darker, but I've only done natural looks. And right now I really want to do something more smoky and slightly colorful. So I'm excited to do like a full glam look with the hair. And I think this is actually the first time doing my makeup since I got my extensions. I'm going to do a cream contour today. I haven't done cream contour in a while. I'm going to use the Bondi Bay cream contour from Nude Sticks. I'm going to pick it up on a brush and start close to the hairline. I'm going to start stippling it. It's so funny. I was so nervous to go darker with my hair just because I've always thought in my head the icier the better the brighter the better all of that that's just kind of what i've wanted for years and i've always wanted that but with healthy hair so it's been a journey <laughs> keeping it really blonde and healthy at the same time and just really taking care of it and i don't know i just feel like once we had our wedding it was like i knew i wanted that hair for our wedding i wanted that color because i had had it for so long i didn't want anything too different and i was always so scared to go darker with my hair ever or do anything different with my hair because to go brighter again i was so scared it was gonna like fall out because i've had different stylists completely fry off my hair before multiple times because i had like finally found 
a stylist that I really loved and she had kept it healthy for so long and bright for so long. I just couldn't believe I was ready to like change it up just because I had gotten it to where I wanted and you know, I got it where I wanted for the wedding. So kind of ready for a change since it's been so long of having it, I guess. And I was so scared cause I, I just thought like, okay, maybe I'm gonna want this just for like a week or something or a couple days. I was just nervous that I was gonna change my mind right away and I'm just loving it. I I feel surprisingly more like myself, which is weird. I mean, I guess it makes sense because I've had more of a natural hair color for the majority of my life, I guess. It's just been like the last five, six, seven years that I've wanted it to be so icy and like white. So yeah, I don't know, it just feels good. Feels good to do something different. I've definitely never had my hair this long before. Probably won't have it this long for a crazy long amount of time. I'm gonna commit to at least three times of having them moved up just because I bought the length. You know, I wanna get the most out of it, but eventually I'll probably go a little bit shorter with the hair again just because, unless I get used to this and really like it, but I'm definitely more of a medium length hair girl. Oh, I also got my nails done recently. And I always go to Mazzy at Beauty and the Beach in Crown Point. And this time we decided to do something a little bit different. So we did some nail art. And when I say we, she did nail art. And it looks so cool. Next time I wanna do something similar and just do black and we'll see. But yeah, I had fun kind of switching it up and doing something different. Now I'm gonna go in with some powder. I've been loving the Jason Wu powder. This has been pretty much all I've been reaching for, mainly because it's pretty identical to the Laura Mercier powder, but it's something that I can also use underneath my eyes as well as on my face to mattify, where I feel like the Laura Mercier one I can only use to mattify, and it's too heavy for under my eyes. So I've been loving this because then it's only one powder that I have to grab. I'm gonna go into the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer because I have my tan on, and this is gonna be the one that works the best with my skin tone right now. This is in the tan shade, I believe. So I'm gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury brush to apply this, just to get a little bit more color in my skin. I've been getting some questions recently about December because last year I posted every single day from the first until Christmas. I think the last couple days I actually slipped off, but it was kind of like whatever, everybody's in holiday mode anyways and like hanging out with their family. So I don't think anybody noticed. But yeah, I got to a point where I was like, okay, I'm tired and I wanna spend time with my family. So that's what I did. I posted every day from the first to like right before Christmas. And I've been getting some questions asking if I'm gonna do that again this year. And I don't know. I feel, I mean, maybe I will, I don't know. But it was a lot of work. <laughs> and I spent a lot of October actually filming for it. So I feel like I ended up missing fall because I was so focused on holiday videos. I don't know, I don't have as many ideas for like holiday tutorials and holiday videos. When I started thinking about it earlier in the year, like around early summer, I started like thinking about my ideas for the rest of the year. And I thought, oh, maybe I'll do that for fall season. But then I thought, okay, I would rather just post as many fall tutorials as I can until Thanksgiving and start as early as I want. So I've literally started fall tutorials in August and I'll be posting them until Thanksgiving. So that's three months of time. So then I thought, you know what, I'll just put most of my thoughts and energy towards like fall stuff since that's what I'm the most excited about anyways. I mean, it's possible that that'll change about December, but I don't know, let me know your thoughts. If you have any ideas or anything different that you'd want me to do this year, let me know. And then I thought, oh, maybe I'll post every other day. That's kind of like close to what I would do anyways. Cause I post three days a week usually. So every other day is very close to that. It's I think adding like one more day in there. Okay, I'm gonna switch to a different brush just so I can focus on these spots. I hate that my skin does this to me. Okay, this is a Smith 112 brush. I'm still using the Charlotte Tilbury powder. I'm just gonna focus it here and hopefully, yeah, it's kind of working. I'm gonna go into a 
Tarte blush. They sent over this blush gift package thing. I wonder if this is like one of their holiday sets. Probably because it says to and from on the back. Can you believe that brands come out with their holiday stuff so early? I think it's crazy, but I'm gonna go into Exposed. This is one of my favorite blushes of all time and I just have not used it in forever. I'm gonna go into the blush and pop it on my cheeks. So Ruben and I have been watching some good shows lately. I thought we'd just chat a little bit about that because I've been really loving what we've been watching. So, and not only just like what we're watching right now, but what we've watched over the last few months. I've been meaning to like talk about this in a chatty get ready with me, but I've always forgot to mention it. So um, with it being like October and kind of spooky season, we watched the Fear Street little mini series on Netflix. I think it's three episodes and one of them is like camp something and each there's three episodes and each of them kind of brings you through a storyline that connects to one another. It's super interesting. So I really liked that. Really quick, I'm gonna use the Flower Beauty Shimmer and Strobe highlighting palette and I'm gonna use the center shade and then a little bit of this to kind of mend that with the blush. But then we also watched this one. It's called 112263. It's basically about this guy that has to go back in time and change history, specifically change the murder of JFK. It's so interesting and you kind of like go through all these things and it just, it's really good. So it's only one season. I think it came out in 2016. So, so far like there isn't another, but they totally could make another season. I really loved the way it ended. It kind of ends with like a little bit of a tearjerker. <laughs> Ruben was like, I hate this, <laughs> but it, it was really good. I really, really liked it. That was really good. We're also watching American Horror Story right now. The new season came out. It's all about vampires and aliens. So the first half is about vampires and the second half is about aliens. So they just actually started the alien portion. So it's just, I like their interpretation of aliens and what they think aliens would be like. I feel like it's the most realistic, but also the most scary, the way that they have it so far displayed on the show. So I really, really like that. The vampire part of the show was kind of stupid, not gonna lie. That was kind of dumb, but so far I'm really liking the alien portion. I start filming my podcast on Monday. I've set it on my schedule. It's happening and I think I'm just going to post as soon as I can because I want to have some episodes up before Halloween. I really want to do something with Amanda. Um, you guys know Amanda Devon. I film with her all the time, but I want to talk to talk with her about some spooky stuff so we can have that up before Halloween. As I was talking about that, like I saw, I've got like a clothing rack here and I've got a blazer on the end and a dark dress and I'm just like I got creeped out for a second. There's nothing there, but it looked like a person. Really quick before I move on and do my eyebrows, I'm gonna set my face. I'm using the Desi Skin Mist. This has been kind of like a staple in my makeup routine recently. I really, really love it. Okay, let me do my eyebrows. I'm gonna do them really quick and then I will be right back. Okay, my brows are done and now I'm gonna go into the Jason Wu eyeshadow primer. I have been loving this. Just know little teeny tiny bit goes a very long way. I do have this in the shade medium. So they are tinted. So I'm just gonna make sure that not much comes out. While I was doing my eyebrows, I remembered some more shows that we've been watching. Season two of the morning show came out. So we started watching that again too. That's really good. Season one was so good. And it was one of those shows that when we watched it, it was a show that we both were so interested in that neither of us like were on our phones or anything. We were so into the show, but yeah, we both really, really liked that. And now season two came out. It's so far, it's not as good as season one, but we'll give it a chance. Wild Crime on Hulu. It's four episodes and it's a documentary about Tony, forgot her last name. She and her husband were hiking and she fell off a cliff. It's basically all about why they think the husband did it. It's super interesting because the first episode I was like, okay, like I can see like their concerns, but to me it looked like an accident. And then as the episodes kept going, it was like, oh, and I could see why they were suspicious. I think you'd really like it. It's super interesting if you like that kind of stuff. And it's only four episodes, so it's not like you get sucked into like eight episode series or something like that. So it's super, super interesting. I also watched, oh, what is it called? Murder on Miller Beach. 
that is on HBO Max. That was also really good and super, super interesting. If you've seen that, who do you think did it? I'm, I'm so curious about what your thoughts are. That's so interesting. If you guys are into that kind of stuff, let me know. I can maybe chat about stuff like that on the future podcast. I definitely won't be doing like full blown true crime talk or anything like that because I'm not that interested in it to like make a whole like series or anything on like all that kind of stuff. Like I definitely think it's interesting, but that's not my journey. That's not my vibe. For my eyeshadow today. So I got the new Be Perfect Cosmetics Carnival, the Antidote palette with Stacey Marie. It looks like this. I'm so freaking excited for this. I have the original palette that they collaborated on together and that's one of my most used palettes. And this one is basically Stacey Marie wanted to create a fall eyeshadow palette. And look how freaking ginormous this is. This is a fall dream. Are you re even ready? Please don't get angry if I use this in multiple tutorials because I just have to because it's so glorious. Check this out. Is this not the most beautiful fall palette you have ever seen? You've got your purples, your orangey reds, you've got all of your greens and some neutrals, you've got some shimmers, you got mattes. They're just absolutely glorious. I'm so excited. So I want to do like kind of like a purpley glittery look today. Um, not necessarily glittery, but just kind of like sparkly. So I really want to use this. And then I also want to use possibly this dose of colors, black party eyeshadow. This is in my jam, which is one of my favorite colors in this. And then I also have the color wild and free, which looks a little bit more silvery, but I might mix these two together depending, but I kind of want to do something along those lines and kind of bring in some purples because I've been getting a lot of requests to do a purple look and I really wanted to do a purple look. So here we are. It's gonna be really tricky to show you these shades because this palette's so ginormous, but I'm gonna use the color buff, which is this shade here, and I'm going to buff it in the crease. So I'm gonna start by putting this in the crease and kind of like mapping out the look. Yeah, let me know down below what topics you want me to cover on the podcast, especially right at first. I'm thinking I might kind of just do like a little about me for the first one, just so you guys can get to know me a little bit better. And then those who are just kind of like stumbling upon the podcast itself can kind of revert back to that to know me if they have no clue who I am and stuff like that. But yeah, let me know like just for the beginning episodes, what are you the most excited for for that? Also gonna bring this underneath, you know the drill. Oh, I'm loving all of these tones in my hair. It's so much fun. I feel like it was very much so like a solid blonde for so long. Every time I went, I would just get highlights, but you know, over and over and over again, it kind of just like solidifies over time. So it's nice to kind of break it up and have some dimension. I'm actually thinking of going, when I go back, going a little bit darker on my root. I don't know, I'm kind of scared, but I don't know, I'm thinking about it. I'm gonna grab a little bit of cinnamon which is this shade here. And I'm gonna use the same brush, but I'm really gonna tap off the excess because that is a darker shade. I'm gonna try to focus it in the crease. That went on a lot more pink than I thought it was going to, um, which I guess is kind of good because it looked really dark. Not really dark, but it looked pretty dark. And it's actually going on like a little bit more of a brighter pink, which will work with this look, but it was definitely different than what I thought. But ooh, that is really pretty. You only need a tiny bit of shadow because they are very pigmented and they blend so easily. They have some of the best eyeshadows ever. Um, I get a lot of questions about when I buy something from a non-American company, how I buy it. You can just shop their website and send it. You know, most places ship internationally, so you just buy it on their website. It might take longer for shipping. Like when I bought this, it said it was only gonna be like a couple days shipping and it was probably only a couple days shipping from once it was received at a certain destination or something because it took a little while for me to get it, but it is worth the wait, let me tell ya. So I'm still just going in with that cinnamon color. Also gonna bring that underneath. Let's go into aubergine, this bottom shade here. It's kind of like a purple, red, brown kind of a shade. And I'm gonna start pushing this on 
the inner and the outer corners and then i'll also bring it in the crease as well once i've kind of mapped out what i'm going for oh that's such a beautiful shade this color always makes me think of my friend candace because it's her favorite color i think maybe a little bit more red than purple but this was the color of her bridesmaids dresses for her wedding and anytime i do her makeup this is like the color that she wants it's so pretty i'm also gonna bring this here on the inner i've been getting a lot of requests for a cranberry look maybe i'll do that soon unless this turns out to be more cranberry but i'm hoping that it goes a little bit more purple once i add more shades and once i've got the majority of that color off i'm going to go on the edges kind of blend and then connect where the outer and the inner lid meet up you know just kind of bring some of this aubergine up into the crease a little bit. Oh, I'm also really excited for the new Halloween movie to come out. I think um, Kyle Richards is in it, so I'm excited to see that. I watch Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and she's on that, so I'm excited to see her in her old acting roles. I'm gonna go into the first brush and that buff shade, and I'm gonna start going around these edges and blending this out. Okay, I'm also gonna bring this on the bottom lash line. So look up and hold far back on the brush and it should be pretty easy to access that area when you do that that way and now i'm going to go into the color fuego which is this pretty true purple color and i'm going to go into another precise brush but a different one because i don't want this to be too overly pink i definitely want it to be more purple so i want to add this to kind of bring out more of the purple in the look so I'm just kind of layering over the aubergine shade, bringing it underneath, and then going back to that fluffy brush with whatever's left over on it and just kind of blending out all of the edges. Going in with a little bit more of that cinnamon color actually, just to kind of help blend out these purple shades. I think that's a nice color because it's kind of like a pinky orangey brown. So this is definitely going more cranberry than I wanted it to go. It is still like really pretty i'm gonna go into pecan the shade here it's kind of like a purpley brown or pecan or pecan however you want to say it and i'm going to do the same thing pop this on the outer and inner corners so also really deepen it i think i'm going to go into that dose of colors shade my jam before i go in with anything else on the outer and inner corners just to see kind of like how this manipulates the look and i might possibly potentially go into wild and free for this i think i'm first actually going to take the Anastasia glitter adhesive, which is unnecessary because you can totally just use this on its own, but I really, really, really want this to pick up onto the eye. We'll see, hopefully I don't regret doing this, but I'm just going to put this in the middle. Ooh, that looks pretty. If only it would stay glossy. And then I'm gonna go into this, which this is what it looks like. You can see it's a little bit more sheer. So I'm hoping that it just really picks up there. I'm actually gonna use a brush, push it onto the lid bringing it all over the lid and it's going to be the most pigmented where i put that glitter adhesive so it's extra pigmented in the center and then it kind of disperses to the outer and inner parts of the lid that is really really pretty that is so freaking pretty i love how that is turning out oh yes i love that okay i kind of want to bring this up a little kind of flicking it into that crease i think this really actually helped because it gave the glitter a spot to be more pigmented and then it kind of sheared out in the other spots making the eye look rounder because it gravitated into the center like that okay so i kind of want to cool down the look just a just a touch i don't want it to be as colorful as it is don't know what i want to put in here to kind of tone down that like pink that's going on, which I do think this is really pretty, but for what I was envisioning in my head, I wanted it to be a little bit more cooled down. I added the tiniest, tiniest hint of latte as usual from Makeup Geek, just to add a hint of coolness and kind of cool down the warmth that was going on with all of those pinks. Cause I really wasn't trying to go for like a cranberry look. I wanted to go more purple. And I think that that really helped tone it down just a touch just highlighting my brow bone with the face highlighter getting the inner corner just dotting that so it's diffused 
and then just blending out the edges so it blends seamlessly from the crease shades to the brow oh i think that looks so good i feel weird because i've got nothing on my lips so it looks a little crazy but i think i'm gonna do a nude in the waterline because it just calls for it so this is one from anastasia you guys know that the rimmel one is one of my favorites along with the makeup by mario one this is just what was sitting closest to me so i'm gonna go in with that and then I'm just really emphasizing that Fuego shade right there at the lashes, which was the more purpley matte shade. I am going to do mascara. This is the Makeup Geek Extension Effect Mascara, my favorite mascara, and it's actually really drying out now because I've had it for months and months, and I've used it so much and I really need a new one. So I'm trying to use every last bit that I have. I also, I need to apply some more blush. I feel like it really, really disappeared. Like my skin just ate up the blush. So I'm gonna go in with more blush cause I just feel like I got like no color on my cheeks. Okay, I'm gonna go into these lashes from Velour. They don't carry them anymore. I will go on their website and try to link similar ones down below, but I had like an entire row of these lashes in my makeup collection. So I'm just using them because I have them and I'm not gonna let them go to waste. I will link similar ones down below if you like the look of these ones. Okay, lashes are on. And now I'm gonna go into the MAC Extended Play Giga Black Lash Mascara and pop them on the bottom lashes. This will help to really make the eye look pop, especially with that nude waterline. It'll help to balance out the crazy top lashes that we've got going on and just really help to open the eye up. Before I go into lip liner, I wanna pick out the lipstick that I'm gonna use. So I got this in the mail from Makeup by Mario. It is all of his new lipsticks. Oh, so excited to try these out. This was in the lid, so it's gonna show me what lip color I wanna do or what they've got at least. So I'm thinking, oh cute, the color Brielle looks like it would be perfect. That's kind of sort of close to my name. <sighs> yeah, I think that's gonna work. Okay, I think I'm gonna try Nude 0.5 Lip Liner from KKW Beauty. I hate using these right now because the site has been down for so long. So if any of you guys wanna get these, I think there's only like two colors left on Ulta's website, but I'll let you know when they come back because they're like the best lip liners ever. I start by lining here. This is definitely more of like a light nude pink. I think nude one would also be really pretty for this look. Fill it in, overline at my cupid's bow right here. I'm gonna go in with cork from MAC. This is a deeper shade, but I'm gonna try to apply it with a very light hand so it doesn't go on too deep. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. What a nice little lip combo we got going on. I can't wait to do those two colors again. And now I'm gonna finish off the lip with the Brielle lipstick from Makeup by Mario. I think this is such a pretty color. It's gonna kind of add a little bit of pink. Love that. This lipstick formula, so good. Mm, it's like matte creamy but not too creamy like a soft matte buttery but not like too slippery slick it's really nice very unique but like perfect i cannot wait to try out more of these colors that is so nice and with this whole look i think that that color was perfect okay so i just put on my drew huggies from miranda fry my daniella ring from miranda fry if it would focus on it there it is and then this very boobalicious crop top from revolve i showed this in my fall try on haul and you guys really loved this top and convinced me to keep it even though the girls are out in this top this is gonna be just like my go-to date night top but ah oh, i love this look this is what it looks like up close so you can see it it turned out exactly like how i was hoping for this lip i cannot wait to keep using these makeup by mario lipsticks that formula is so nice it's just what i've always imagined a good matte lipstick should be so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed following along with how I got this look and enjoyed hearing me chat about random stuff. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Please subscribe and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.